Hello fellas, Spanky Day here. Okay guys, tonight, video number five is the final reveal for my 132nd scale Arado Type 196 B float plane. I've been at this pretty much all day to get it all done folks, you know, it's, there's a lot of work doing this thing here. You know, the hardest part about this whole kit guys uh, is uh, the construction of the canopy. I don't know what Ravel of Germany was thinking when they, when they designed this canopy. All these parts got to be glued together to make the canopy to fit it in. It's very tedious, but fellas, but it comes out pretty good once once it's uh, once it's done on a model. You got to make sure that all the parts are are masked off. The, the clear parts are masked off, and go ahead and airbrush your frames. And I assembled by using this uh, this canopy glue. If I had second thoughts, I was going ahead and start using that five-minute epoxy. I should have used a 5 minute epoxy. This stuff works pretty good, fellas, but uh, you just gotta watch yourself with this, uh, this catcher's canopy glue here. You guys probably got some of this from your workbench. If not, you probably got some other stuff out there. But if you guys got there, you fellas out there, got any uh, canopy glue which is better than this stuff, I'm all ears. Let me know uh, and uh, I'll get you some. In other words, I'll go back to my favorite method using Aileen's tacky glue or 5 minute epoxy. Well, anyway, folks, that's not the only flaw of the kit that I can see that I don't like is assembly of the cockpit frames and everything. And uh, so, you got to take very very heed in, in uh, building that, uh, that assembly step because you can run into trouble if you don't. And you sure don't want to mess up the clear cockpit in this because you'll, you'll regret it at the end when the model's uh, at the finished stages for a reveal. <clears throat> okay, guys. Um, my next build is going to be, um, I'm going to be on the, uh, on the card kit of the uh, Battle of Britain group build. It'll be on my Spitfire. Incidentally, uh, Stuart, from Stuart's models, uh, he woke me up a little bit about, uh, about this here kit here. Now, I don't know what I was thinking when I presented this one here uh, for my uh, entry for the, uh, the Battle of Britain group build. And uh, this here, this here, this here uh, Spitfire was used later, back in 1941, instead of uh, the Battle of Britain. So actually, this was this was about a year after the Battle of Britain, a long ways off after the Battle of Britain, at this uh, this aircraft flown. I don't know what I was thinking. My God, I, I assumed that it was the Battle of Britain, but I look at the at the extended cannons on the leading edge of the wings, and plus the the Polar Squadron, and everything. So uh, that's not uh, so. Many fellas out there take notice of that. I just now noticed it, and thank you, Stuart, for uh, opening my eyes on this. But guys, this may not be Battle of Britain uh, Spitfire, but it's a Spitfire. I want to go ahead and build it and use it in the entry. And uh, I, I got to find out how long this uh, group build is going to be for the Battle of Britain. I like to be able to, to, to post another build on there. Okay, guys, uh, getting back to the Rado, of course. We'll come over here and take a good look at it and. Uh, so we'll see how it goes there, right? And uh, we'll take a look at it, fellas. And I know the camera's pretty friendly. We'll sing around and take a look at the the final reveal of my Arado float plane. Okay, fellas, there she is right there. I think I can zoom in a little more. That's about the good again about steering the whole view of the, of the model. And right here, folks, is uh, the completion of it. It's all done. The canopy took me about five hours to put the canopy on. And it's very tedious and very, very fragile, fellas. So you don't want to dare and, and obscure and mess up the, uh, your canopy. In other words, you'll be in a world of hurt. We have to turn around and get a hold of Ravel and see if they can send you a new one. And uh, I got the, uh, the wing floats. And the main pontoon right here, float is all aluminum. And uh, I used uh, Alcad's uh, aluminum too. That's the first time I ever used Alcad's aluminum before, fellas. It's, it's, it's a very good paint. It's almost that good as that as Model Master, even better. What I like about it, it dries real good. It has a good, uh, has a good sheen to it. It looks like real aluminum, to tell you the truth. Uh, Alcad's has got my blessing now, so. I don't want to do any metal finishes. I'll, I wouldn't mind going down and buy me some more of that outclad. 
Okay, guys, we turn around a little bit. I went ahead and uh, did a lecture on this thing with the kit on offer. No German airplane don't look good without swastikas. I didn't have any swastikas, fellas, but why did I made my own? And uh, as we get this tail pretty well centered with the camera here, we'll zoom in and it will take a look at the uh, the swastika. I made the spots get a little white meatball right there using decal paper. Very thinly cut. You can see the details of the airplane. It's all, it's all finished in its entirety. The floats are on. I got all the rigging done on it. And I like that spots get on there. Now it's a German airplane, fellas. Now she's a German airplane. I just wish they would uh, go ahead and start putting more swatches on these kits. They're, they're trying to. They're trying to do the best they can, fellas, but producing some swatches on, on German aircraft. They're, eventually, they'll touch base with the people who put a law against them, and especially in Germany. Uh, it's the symbolism of fascism and everything else. But like I say, it's history, fellas, you know? No German airplane will look good without swatches. They don't. That's the nature of the aircraft. That's the nature of the uh, of the country this thing flew for and of course it uh, makes the German airplane stand out real nice hey, I'll zoom in a little more here fellas I'll zoom out zoom in a little bit more As you see I got the rigging done on there and uh, the floats are all done canopy's in place so you gotta be very very careful that canopy fellas you don't want to mess it up that's what I don't like about the canopy of this kit because, uh, for example, on the windscreen, Ford windscreen right here, it comprises of three pieces. And you can't, do not dare to use any plastic cement or, uh, or, or ACC super glues because you'll fog up and ruin the, the plastic. So the best thing to do is, like I said before, is either use Aileen's tacky glue or you can use some kind of a white glue, five minutes of epoxy, or you can use this stuff right here. And uh, what I've got right here, this uh, this tester's uh, canopy glue. This stuff does okay, but I know there's some better out there. So any any fellas out there have any suggestions on buying some better canopy glue? Let me know. I surely appreciate it. Okay, we got the uh, I got it on the display base right there. And it comes it's going together very, very well. This is a good kit, fellas. I'm not kidding. I mean, Mavell did an excellent job when they produced this this here airplane. You know, they just they just keep cranking it out and they get better and better all the time. And uh, I dropped the flaps on it, so the flaps are pretty well lowered. And uh, it goes very well, guys. That's about the only thing I can say is bad about the kit is, is the canopy. So it's got to be put together. I can't stress it anymore than I have to, fellas. Please be very careful when you're assembling the canopy on this here kit. It's, it's time consuming. It really is. But there's a trick to it. The trick to it is glue the sides in first on top of the fuselage and the top will follow. And it cannot be glued together as an assembly, then glued onto the model. It's got to be glued on the model, starting with the sides first and the top. And you got to be quite certain that the, your frame's all been airbrushed and everything. And there's all ways of doing it, fellas. But it's ever easier. It works easy for me on this on this aircraft right here is uh, by putting on the sides, the side of the window frames first, and the top will follow. On the ordinance because of those kit, there's some bombs there. They look like they're about 50 pound bombs, maybe, or maybe 100 pound bombs. And there's only uh, armor that comes in this here kit. So I can't stress any more if it uh, has any more than that uh, in the, on the A model, but 
on the V model, it uh, just gives you two bombs. It's probably pretty much that on the A model, too. When I look at the A model and the B model are the same, same thing, except the only difference is it's, it's a float assembly. And the A model gave you two floats. And it goes very, good, very well, fellas. I really, I really enjoy building this thing. And uh, it goes... I'm pretty happy with this kit. So it's time to put it away and uh, go to something else, which will be my card kit. So, once again, fellas, please excuse this Spitfire. It's not the Battle of Britain Spitfire, but I like Spitfires, and I feel like building a card kit for a change, and we'll see how this one goes here. And, uh, I might be able to dream and think something else up, too. Okay, guys, we'll swing this camera around to yours truly and uh, finish up the video. Oh, here I is. Okay, guys, that completes the uh, in inbox review on the uh, final reveal for my Arado Type 196 float plane. I'm going to put it all there right behind me, as you can see. And I'm going to sit there and dry for a while and go ahead and um, And glue some uh, former page on some cardboard here for my uh, Spitfire. And probably work on my Spitfire a little bit tonight. That's all your good thing to do. Okay, guys. Uh, so I should have a, a video by this Tuesday on my uh, Spitfire. Hopefully, I should have the cockpit all done and the fuselage all assembled. And uh, the stabilizers and the... Um, Wings will follow next. So right now I'm kind of cleaning up my workstation. Gee, folks, hard to describe back here. Just mess, 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 mess. And uh, so I think the fun part about starting another project is cleaning up your workbench. <laughs> anyway, it needs a good spring cleaning before I proceed any further. Okay, guys, uh, this is Frankie Day signing off. I'd like to thank everybody for tuning in. May God bless and God love you guys. And uh, we'll catch you guys on the next video, which will be Tuesday. So please uh, stay tuned for the, uh, the first video on my card kit of the uh, Spitfire Mark uh, IV. And uh, once again, I'd like to thank everybody out there for your comments and your wonderful views on this here build I'm doing and all the others that were there before this got uh, finished. And, and I'm very happy and I hope you guys are very happy. And uh, Gilbert, uh, I forgot, I'm sorry dear sir. Last night I had internet problems joining on your hangout last night, and uh, I always enjoy your hangouts. And we don't, we're all all the fellows just talking and everything, having a good time. That's the way it should be. And somehow my internet don't work too good, and uh, <clears throat> I gotta find out a better way. It's too much bandwidth or something. I don't know what it could be though, but I just keep on going off and off, and and the web page ain't responding, and ain't no fun. So I just shut it down. Okay, like I say again, Gilbert, my, my humblest apologies. Next time I'll try to get this thing fixed up so I can be able to uh, be on there like the rest of you great fellows are. Okay, guys, it's Frankie Day signing off. Thank God bless and happy modeling. Please make Mama happy. And uh, we'll catch you guys in the next video. So stay tuned this Tuesday for the first video update on my Spitfire, the card kit, on the Bottle of Britain group build. It's Frankie Day signing off. Catch you boys later. Bye, fellas.